Hello and welcome everybody to uh, the May 13th, 2015 webinar on CRL Collections and Services. Uh, we're very pleased that you were able to join us today and uh, I see a number of people are still logging on as we go, but uh, we had wonderful uh, registration for this and a lot of interest expressed in, in CRL's Collections and Services. This is a general webinar where we uh, provide a, a handy overview for many of the collections, many of the programs and services, uh, and practical tips on uh, how to make the most of your CRL membership. So this is a great refresher for, for uh, individuals and institutions uh, who uh, need a, a reminder of how to uh, make the use of our collections, uh, what's new going on at CRL. Uh, and the like. It's also great for our new members. We have a number of new members joining us today for the webinar, uh, as well as some of our very favorite uh, long-standing members of CRL. You can uh, take a guess at who those are. Uh, yes, it's you. Uh, I'd also like to recognize that we have a, a few prospective members joining us today. Uh, so welcome to all of you, and uh, we look forward to uh, having you follow up with us if you have additional questions or if you're interested in, in what we have to say. So welcome everybody. We have a few just uh, very brief housekeeping notes. We've muted all of the phones uh, and the, um, the, the speaker or the microphones I suppose uh, on entry. This is to cut back on the, the background noise. Uh, some people are listening in a, in a group room, uh, so feel free to speak among yourselves. Um, because you are muted however, we do encourage you to uh, put down your questions and comments in the uh, chat function uh, on, on the WebEx uh, Center here. You'll, you should be able to see that on the right um, or in one of the menu bars. If you have a question for us, feel free to put it in there at any time during the presentation. Uh, we'll look to address those as we can get to them uh, or clarify maybe what we said uh, if it was a little confusing. And we'll have a few minutes at the end also to address uh, some of those group comments and questions. I'd like to introduce uh, myself first and, and all of the presenters who are here today. My name is James Simon. I'm the Vice President of Collections and Services uh, here at CRL. Joining us today is Kevin Wilkes, who's the Head of Access Services, Mary Wilkie, who's our Member Liaison and Outreach Services Director, and Virginia Kerr, who's the Head of Communications and Development. Uh, the four of us, along with our technical team, will be here to uh, guide you through the next hour and uh, I will uh, get to the agenda. But first, just a, a very quick statement of CRL. If you're brand new and, and have never heard of us before, well, I'm not sure how you got on this call. But CRL is a, a, a nonprofit association of more than 200 academic and independent research libraries. Uh, this, this, uh, the, the membership of CRL comprises both voting and global members. Uh, we have uh, our primary membership is based in the United States uh, and in Canada, although our global members are growing, uh, and you'll see here that we have members now in Hong Kong, India, and Germany. CRL's mission is to support advanced research and teaching in the humanities, social sciences, and sciences. Uh, uh, we, we do that, uh, we support uh, research in all fields, all subjects. Our strengths, of course, are in the humanities and social sciences, but uh, we have a very strong science collection here, as well as uh, partnerships with other organizations that provide research materials along the lines of that. Really, CRL has always been about ensuring the availability of primary sources through preservation uh, of critical historical and cultural evidence that neither individual libraries nor commercial publishers alone can preserve. Uh, we make those materials available to researchers uh, in all formats. As many of you know, uh, CRL, uh, aside from being just an association, is a physical library in itself. We have a shared collection uh, that we've built up over more than six decades of our history. Um, that's generated a collection of primary source materials the size of a major research library. So you'll see here uh, approximately five million volumes or volume equivalents of research material. How we go about our collecting uh, is we uh, work with communities of interest. Uh, what we preserve and digitize is decided by these communities uh, within CRL. Uh, special interest groups such as our Africana uh, Materials Project uh, Latin American uh, similarities there in the Middle East, South Asia, etc. 
uh, as well as special interests and advisory groups such as our Collections and Services Policy Committee, uh, our advisory groups for science, for law, and, and the like. CRL is the world's largest and most enduring collections de collection development community. Member libraries pool their resources and expertise uh, to identify, acquire, and preserve, uh, as well as share critical evidence and documentation for original research and evidence-based teaching. Here's the agenda uh, for what we'll cover during the course of the next 55 or so minutes. Uh, we're going to present uh, an overview of CRL's collections and collecting partnerships. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, how to discover CRL resources as well as borrowing uh, that material. Uh, along the line, we'll talk about our growing uh, digital services as well. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the licensing and purchase programs. These are uh, participatory programs of the CRL membership that help identify uh, and, and gain access to electronic and physical collections. We'll also talk about uh, our outreach services and other ways that you can use CRL and its staff uh, to maximize the use of CRL at your institution. And finally, we'll have some time for questions and answers. So feel free, again, to put those into the chat. Uh, or Q&A. So with that, uh, I'd like to get started. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is just pull up a picture of CRL so that you get a sense of where we are. We are based in Chicago, Illinois, uh, and as I said, we are a physical library. Um, and the south side, the home of the soon-to-be Obama Presidential Library. Uh, that is not ourselves, but we'll be near it. Uh, we, are, uh, uh, we have four floors, uh, three of which are devoted entirely to the collections. Here you'll see a, a, an image of our, our open stacks here where we maintain our current and, and open serials, as well as the uh, compact shelving uh, where we host the variety of our microfilms, special collections, and other catalog, catalog resources. We do encourage you uh, to come on by and to uh, visit CRL, uh, whether you're here for a conference such as ALA, which is routinely in Chicago, uh, or you're just here on, on special purposes to contact us if you're interested in, in tours. We also offer group tours uh, for, for institutions that are interested in bringing along staff to learn more about the collections. Uh, I also want to show uh, you our virtual uh, site, our CRL's website. If we can go to the website, please. This again is a, it's a brand new uh, site as well. Uh, we've just redesigned it and we hope that it is uh, uh, likable and interesting. Our site is full of information where you can learn more about all aspects of CRL. Uh, we have uh, tabs running along the top that provide you more information about the CRL's membership uh, and, and governance, about our collections, electronic resources, uh, as well as uh, other uh, programs, collaborations, and uh, special projects here. Um, so we're going to navigate uh, through the course of the day uh, sort of along the lines of some of these, but I'm going to take you right now to the collections since we'll talk about the collection overview. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, wait. First I wanted to show you the CRL online catalog uh, as well. So here's where you can get uh, into the specifics of, of uh, CRL's collections. All of our materials are cataloged in OCLC's WorldCat, uh, and are available through our online catalog, and Kevin will talk more about where else our records are placed. Uh, but here you can see just kind of an overview of, of how to, to get at more of our collections. You'll see some tabs along the top of the screen uh, where you can dive deeper into specific parts of our collections, whether it's serials, newspapers, or even our digital resources here, um, where you can search exclusively for the electronic resources. I'm going to take you into newspapers, though, because that's the first part of the collection I want to talk about. Uh, and here we're just going to show you uh, one of the special search functions that we have uh, put into place here, and that is the ability to browse our newspaper collection by country or by state. Uh, and here we'll just pull up a state, um, how about Missouri, and we'll uh, click on that, and then it'll take you into a, a browsable list of titles, well, first, I guess, by, by location, so by county. And we're just going to go into St. Louis so that you can see that. And then you get a listing of titles uh, for those particular locations. Here you can see a special feature of our, uh, our, our catalog where you can get immediate access to the digital resources that we have as well. So if you'll see here the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, when you click on that, it says electronic resource. 
uh, alongside the catalog record, you can see what's available online on the right side of your screen. So if we take you into that, you're, you're able to see uh, here our special browse feature of our newspapers in Serial's document delivery system. And when you click on an available date, uh, you're taken right to the electronic materials. These materials have been digitized specifically for CRL members, uh, and uh, this is part of the exclusive benefit of membership in CRL. So you can see here kind of the, the PDF um, images that uh, we've digitized and put up for members' uh, research and teaching purposes. So I hope that uh, gives you just a little bit of a sense of how you can do that, and I encourage you to play around. Uh, I'm just going to take you back right now to our slides just to carry you through for uh, a few minutes about some of the major aspects of our collection. The first part uh, as, that we've been talking about here are the newspapers. This is one of CRL's uh, capstone collections. Uh, we have more than 14,000 titles uh, f ranging from the United States uh, and international. Uh, we have newspapers in, in all formats, print, microform, and digital uh, represented in our collection. I would say about 25% of the collection uh, relates to U.S. general circulation newspapers covering all states and territories uh, and the date ranging from colonial times up to the present. So it's quite a comprehensive, uh, quite a large collection, not necessarily comprehensive, um, and widely circulates among, among the membership as part of our lending process. Uh, in addition to the, the general circulation, we have U.S. ethnic newspapers, part of our uh, core collection. Uh, from the mid-1800s to the present uh, from all different uh, ethnic groups that mi immigrated to the United States, so your German-American and, and Chinese-American newspapers. Uh, all, we hold those again in print and in microfilm, and we do lend all formats to the members. Our international collections, uh, representing the, the remainder of the newspaper collection, come from over 150 countries, and that covers from about 1700 to the present although the bulk of the materials are predictably in the 20th century. Uh, again, print, microfilm, and digital. We also maintain current subscriptions uh, to both U.S. and international titles, uh, as well as engaging in, as we still engage in microfilming, yes we do, uh, in microfilming titles that are otherwise not represented uh, by commercial publishers. So if you're interested in what those current titles are, they are on our website. <clears throat> Increasingly, we're digitizing this material and we're delivering it, uh, as you saw, through our uh, document delivery and through some strategic partnerships. Second part of the collection, just to, to uh, round, round out the other parts of our collections here, uh, CRL's serial or journal collections, another large uh, and widely used collection. Uh, we have more than 62,000 catalog titles, uh, which uh, uh, is augmented year by year for current subscriptions of about 6,000 journal titles. Uh, we collect materials uh, specifically tailored to complement our member institutions' own collections. So we're not collecting the, the most frequently held serials uh, or journals here. What we aim to collect are materials that are not commonly collected by uh, uh, large research libraries or even um, small uh, core research library collections. So the kinds of materials that we will collect are uh, a lot of foreign language materials, things like um, East Asian science uh, materials, as well as uh, science collections from uh, countries uh, in Eastern Europe and the former Soviet states. Um, we also collect materials through the Library of Co Congress cooperative acquisition programs in uh, places like India, Pakistan, um, Indonesia, the Philippines, and the like, too. Uh, really round out the collections of these materials that are not commonly collected even by those libraries with the most specialized interest in, in South and Southeast Asia, for instance. The bulk of our journal collection is in hard copy, uh, and the titles are, are nearly fully cataloged uh, and are uh, available for lending. We can lend both uh, physical volumes as much as you want for as long as you want it, or we can engage in article delivery of materials as well. Digital access to this material, yes, we do through demand digitization, as well as content partnerships, uh, which we'll uh, be talking about more in depth later on in the program. CRL's dissertation collection, uh, another large uh, and unique collection of materials in North America. CRL is, has collected uh, more than 800,000 foreign doctoral dissertations, uh, dissertations that it is outside of the United States and Canada. 
Uh, these are really uh, meant to complement the, the large dissertation collections held by uh, other, your home institution, perhaps, or uh, available through ProQuest's dissertation series. Uh, the collections range all dates, all subjects, uh, and, and languages from all over the world. Uh, the collection's strengths uh, start around the 1800s, and they continue through the 20th century. I would say 90% of the collection's 20th century material. Um, and uh, geographically speaking, the strengths are from Europe, uh, particularly from Germany and France, but also from the UK, from Switzerland, uh, and the like. And we have a representative collection from other parts of the world, and as I said, in all subjects. So uh, all of these have now been cataloged, and they are available through WorldCat and CRL's collection. Uh, and they do actually circulate quite a bit um, as well. So uh, this is a, a great collection that uh, really features um, secondary research and, and other primary interesting materials like, as you can see here, Albert Einstein's dissertation uh, in, in our collections itself. <coughs> Excuse me. Finally, I just want to touch on government archi documents and archives as a special part of our, our collecting efforts. CRL has been paying increasing attention to government documentation over the past couple of years, uh, though we've been engaged in collecting this material since our founding. That is, we have large bodies of government archival sets, such as those from the National Archives or the UK, uh, uh, the National Archives of the UK. We also have a large collection of U.S. state agency documents and foreign government documents uh, to, to round out our collections. We also maintain a special collection of foreign official gazettes, which are the legal publications of a variety of countries. And CRL's recently begun a digitization program of some of the, the most endangered foreign official gazettes in our collections and materials uh, from countries that are non-transparent or perceived as corrupt nations. All of these collections uh, uh, re really just represent the uh, scratching the surface of, of CRL's collecting activities. Um, and we encourage you to use our website to uh, explore more about our collections, which you can find in the, the topic guides that we have on our website um, and uh, through our, our special focus newsletter, uh, where we cover particular specialties and, and topics as we go. Let's just take you to the topic guide really quickly uh, so you can see where it is on our website. And here again, when we go to the home screen, uh, under collections, if you just hover over that, you can see uh, a listing of where you can see more information, as well as some of the topics we'll be soon covering. But off to the right side of the drop down, you can see the topic guides. And let's click on that if we can. Uh, and here you can see a listing of some of the special topic guides that we've developed over time. Uh, if we scroll down, uh, you can see that we're busy working on enhancing some of these with additional information and related resources. If we just go to uh, uh, one of the topic guides here to show you the uh, government publications, since I was just talking about that for uh, the U.S., you can see here you're dropped into uh, an introductory essay about some of the landscape of collecting the materials that we have. Uh, as well as uh, some tabs where you can get additional information about CRL's resources. So let's click on the middle tab for CRL collections, where you can see a summary of some of the materials that we have, such as the congressional bills and resolutions uh, and other material as well. There's a variety of information on these topic guides, and I encourage you to explore them more and share them with your colleagues, uh, and perhaps even embed these in your own topic guides uh, or research, uh, research instructional uh, materials for, for your patrons. I'm running a little bit over time, so I'm going to breeze through the next couple slides that we have. Um, but they're very important uh, to learn about. Um, in addition to CRL's own collecting activities, which we've been doing, as I said, for over six decades, we've been increasingly engaging with other institutions uh, with similar missions and interests to extend the collecting activities uh, and access to collections on behalf of our member institutions. These so-called collection partnerships really do extend the reach of CRL's expertise into special topics like science, technology, and engineering. Uh, here you can see some information about our Global Resources STE partnership with the Linda Hall Library of Science, Engineering, and Technology. This is a partnership that has been pr providing access to the deep and rich collections of the Linda Hall Library, which is an independent science library. 
they hold more than 50,000 current, uh, I'm sorry, they hold more than 40,000 current uh, and historical journals that supplement and complement the CRL collection. Through CRL's special global resources partnership, all our member libraries receive free access to the article document delivery um, from the Linda Hall collection through Rapid ILL. There's more information about this on our website and we've hosted a, a couple of special presentations about the Linda Hall partnership where you can view this material on CRL's YouTube channel available from our site. Our second partnership, very similar to the STE, is our law partnership uh, where we have partnered with the Law Library Microform Consortium or LLMC. LLMC has been engaged in the preservation and access to government and legal information from the United States and other countries, again, for a long time. Now they've been working to convert this material to digital format and making it accessible to their members through LLMC Digital. CRL has partnered with LLMC to provide complete access to that collection for all CRL members. More than just access, however, these, both the Linda Hall collection and the LLMC partnership are engaged in targeted and strategic digitization of additional resources to provide access for CRL members. So not only do you get access to the LLMC digital by virtue of your membership in CRL, we are also engaging in targeted digitization of foreign legal and government materials, uh, U.S. state legislative uh, content, Canadian legislative journals, and a variety of other primary source material that is of use not just to legal research, but also for the social sciences and history studies as well. Again, we have more information on this on our website. Finally, just to bring it back all to news, um, our news collection partnership, slightly different, but also uh, um, similarly ambitious in its scope, CRL has been working uh, with its member community to identify uh, and target newspapers, particularly foreign newspapers, for digitization and access through enhanced delivery. Um, in partnership with Redex, uh, which is a division of Newsbank, CRL is partnered to create the World Newspaper Archive, delivering, again, historical content from, from different world regions. This is, is not a standard library commercial partnership uh, in that the CRL community uh, really calls all of the, the shots when it comes to identification of resources uh, and provision of this material on behalf of their member institutions. All CRL members receive a deeply, deeply discounted um, access to this material, uh, which is an add-on to the CRL membership, but uh, is, is quite, um, uh, quite an interesting partnership, which if I had time, I would talk more and more about. However, uh, I do know that we need to roll on to keep ourselves on schedule. So I've talked a little bit about the, um, uh, the discovery uh, of, of the CRL collections through our online catalog. Um, but I, I also just want to uh, mention before I go here that um, we're also available in WorldCat and in the major web scale discovery uh, services. Uh, that is the OCLC WorldShare, in Primo, in Summon. So all of our, our materials are available uh, for discovery if you're using one of those systems. It is important to note, though, that you do need to select CRL as a collection in order to make those discoverable through your discovery system. Uh, we've been working with the discovery systems to help improve the visibility of CRL's records. Uh, as many people know, the discovery systems do tend to uh, emphasize uh, both widely held as well as electronic resources. And since we have such a vast collection of print resources, we've been working hard to make sure that those materials uh, are visible in your discovery services. We also make our available, records available for local loading. That is, we provide free access to a set of records uh, that you can load into your local catalog, uh, which points your users to uh, the CRL collections and instructs them how to get access to that material. So now I've talked about the records. I'm going to point this uh, back to Kevin Wilkes, our head of access services, to take you through the next step of the process of borrowing CRL's materials. Kevin? Hi, I'm Kevin Wilkes of Access Services. I'm going to talk with you about how to borrow, how we deliver, one of our best programs, which is the Demand Purchase Program, and how to access our digital collection, and how you can load our records into your catalog. You may send this request through OCLC, our Iliad, or Iliad, our symbol is CRL. We ask you to enter us in first in the litter stream because we want to make certain that we get to your request or you can send us a request through fax or 
the hard copy form sent through mail, such as the ALAIL form, or even a general email through our general email account at asdscrl.edu. Now, many of our members are involved with consortiums that facilitate resource sharing. We have joined many of those consortiums, such as Linda Hall, Rapid, Prospector, Connect New York, you borrow and borrow direct. We're always willing to explore the possibility of joining other consortiums which will benefit our members' use of the center in its material. We have a very generous loan period for our members, six months with unlimited renewals. And what that means is that you won't hear from me at all about something being overdue, but you will possibly hear from me if another member wants the same material. So we will be co contacting you about a recall. All of our material is shipped by UPS second day delivery. For those members in Ohio, we use the Ohio Link Courier System. For Illinois, we use ILDS. And for our copies, we use Odyssey, Arial for those who are still using it, fax, email PDF attachment, and U.S. mail. We're able to turn around and or respond to most requests within 24 hours, but of course there could be possible delays such as there's a citation problem or it could just be that the material is not on shelf. But still, 90% of our field loans in articles have a one business day turnaround time. Now, the Demand Purchase Program is a program which not only saves you time, but money as well by letting us purchase requested material for your patrons' use. It covers three areas, archival material, newspapers, foreign doctoral dissertations. And the demand purchase process is initiated by you sending us an ILL request. And to help expedite the process, we ask you to put in the borrowing notes, please purchase. There is a $2,000 limit per patron each fiscal year. And what we mean by that is not that your institution is a patron, but each patron within your institution gets a $2,000 limit each year. Now, for more costly material or material that does not fit into any of these three categories, you may want to utilize one of our other purchase programs like the Purchase Proposal or the Shared Purchase Program, and Mary Wilkie will be speaking about that a little bit more later. For archival material, this is material such as the U.S. National Archives or the Great Britain National Archives, but it no longer is limited to just archives of the national government. We've also expanded this program to include the archives of semi-government organizations, NGOs, and institutions. For newspapers, these are foreign and domestic newspapers of which we already own one date. So, Say, for instance, we already own the Berkeley Monitor for 1969, but you have a patron who wants to get something from 1972. We would do our best to purchase 1972 for your patron's use. For foreign doctoral dissertations, these are dissertations outside of the U.S. and Canada. And once again, to help expedite the process, we ask you to put on the borrowing notes. If not owned, please purchase. Now, some of the institutions are requiring a signed copyright declaration form. And many institutions like Cambridge, Hong Kong, Manchester, Oxford, they're requiring their own specific signed form. And what we're asking you to do is if you don't have a certain form to contact us, and we'll send you the form. Many of the British Library dissertations are now accepting accessible through their ethos program. If there is a cost for the initial scanning of a dissertation in ethos, we ask you to send us a request. We will then pay for the initial scanning. Once the scanning is complete, we will inform you that the scans are available and they are then available for free. CRL has contributed to the scanning of dissertations provided by Ethos, so I strongly suggest that you take full advantage of the Demand Purchase Program. We're filling more and more of our requests digitally. Our goal is to provide research and 
teaching material in a digital format, making the access of the material more efficient and expedient. Each year, we've digitized over 3.4 million pages, and over 800,000 of those pages come from digital delivery. Strategic plan digitalization is done through partnerships to build collections such as with WNA and ProQuest, as James mentioned earlier. Our e-resource collection includes everything from dissertations to colonial government reports. Our current turnaround time for digital delivery is five business days. We're willing to work with faculty members who desire to have material digitized for class use. We will scan not only hard copy, but also micro format as well, and this does include micro cards. Digital delivery is generated through an ILL request from your institution. When an ILL request is sent to the center, we have the material paged. It's then reviewed to see if it meets the criteria for digitization, and we check the material's fragility and content. Once it's been decided that the material, material is eligible for digitizing, the requesting library is informed that we will attempt to fill the request digitally. The material is then given a file name and delivery date, is sent for scanning and saved as a PDF file with embedded OCR. A link is also placed on our OPAC for any future use. The requesting library is then informed by email with the URL and we update the RealCat record keeping our holdings current. Our e-resource collection can be accessed many ways from our website. You may access our entire digital collection from our catalog by clicking on the digital tab. Some highlighted digital collections such as the Chinese pamphlets can be found by going to our main page and clicking on the Electronic Resources tab and then Digital Collections. If the patron is off campus, they must have proxy through their institution to gain access to our digital collection. There are three categories allowing access to our digital collections. Material not under copyright falls under open access, allowing the general public viewing privileges. Material in the gray area is only accessible to our members. Material under copyright protection is only accessible by our members after agreeing to copyright restrictions. When the material is under copyright, the patron is taken to this screen. Once the server has verified the IP address as a valid member institution and the patron has agreed to the copyright agreement, the scans will appear. Once again, let me say, if the patron is off campus, they must have proxy through their institution. Now I'm going to speak with you quickly about record loading. This is a totally free service to our member institutions. It enhances visibility of your partnership with CRL. You will have more of your patrons requesting CRL material and providing you more use of your CRL membership. It also increases accuracy of requests, such as patron initiated requests. We have universities, such as Harvard and the University of Florida, who have shown vast improvement in their fill rate, as well as consortiums like Ohio Link, Prospector, and Rapid. We have over 1.3 million records in our catalog. You don't have to download our entire catalog. You may only want to download portions of our catalog, such as the newspapers, the dissertations, or the digital collection. Once again, this is a free service to our member institutions. Now, if you possibly have a visiting scholar who is wanting to come to Chicago to use material on site here, just give us three business days advance notice to make certain material is here because we want to verify material is here since all material circulates to member institutions. Our reading room hours are Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock to 2, and it's by appointment only. But if a patron comes and they did not schedule an appointment, we will do our best to accommodate them. If you have any questions or concerns, or even problems, please do not hesitate to contact me or my assistant, Michelle Carver. And I am now turning this over to Mary Wilkie. Hi, this is Mary. My job um, is to help 
assist members in the CRL community by helping them understand and use the programs and services CRLs offers. My work really falls into two categories, cooperative collection development programs, which includes licensing and reference consultations. The work CRL does with electronic licensing is the next step from our traditional investment in primary source collections and programs, one of which Kevin has already spoke about, uh, the demand purchase program. We've offered, as, as since we began offering electronic resources, uh, consortial discount offers. We've done over 40 electronic products since fiscal year 2010, uh, which has resulted in over 400 purchases and or subscriptions with 124 unique institutions having participated. On this screen you see some of the offers. Savings ranged from 10% to 55%. Um, we, we do have a, a, a specific platform that was developed by CRL, which we call eDisderata, where we gather and organize the e-resources of interest to CRL libraries. We solicit member input and track the progress of negotiations and take up. It's a place for sharing information and opinions about e-resources, and we value your input, including nominating or suggesting resources that we should follow up with. Here is a screenshot of the eDisderata platform, and as you can see, we have reviews, our active offers, and the CRL pipeline. Um, as I mentioned, we really do value your input and um, participation in, in sharing the information that you might know locally with the CRL community as a whole. An example of a, uh, an offer that's actually going on now is with the New York Times. We've had 63 users comment on this. There's an average rating uh, for this of a 2.5 and even though there's a lot of thumbs down, it's, it's by whole is one of the more positive um, offers because it is the New York Times. It's such a valuable resource for ed uh, education. With our cooperative collection building program, um, it's designed to aid both member libraries and scholars in connecting users to resources they need. Kevin already uh, talked about the demand purchase one uh, it, with the three categories of newspapers, archives, and dissertations. We've had some questions. We do not buy master's dissertations, um, but, but we focus on doctoral level dissertations. The three programs on our website are the demand purchase program, purchase proposal program, shared purchase program. Since Kevin talked about the demand one, I'll skim over the remaining two, as you can read more about these programs at your own convenience. The Purchase Proposal Program happens, um, why it happens all year round in, that, in the way that we gather suggestions and have you nominate suggestions for us, the ballot is, comes out in the fall and our community then ranks the items on the ballot and we then per, um, buy 
as far down the ranked list as we can. There are some uh, criteria f to make a proposal uh, on the ballot. You can read more about that on the web page for the program. We also offer a how-to video explaining the steps of both nomination and voting for this program on our YouTube channel. The remaining cooperative collection program is the Shared Purchase Program, and this is an entirely voluntary program. Unlike the Purchase Proposal 1 that happens in the fall, this happens in the spring. And most of the items really are items that were not acquired through the Purchase Proposal Program. Why CRL uses its funds to buy the ones on the Purchase Proposal uh, ballot, the Shared Purchase Program is more like a buyer's club. It's entirely voluntary. The nominating library contributes some funds, CRL contributes some funds, and we put out a ballot where members can pledge funds for the acquisitions of the materials on this ballot. It is entirely voluntary. On this screen, you will see some examples purchased through these various programs. The Central American Archives was, uh, came through us via the Purchase Proposal Program, the files of the Communist Party of Japan through the Shared Purchase, and we even have an ethos dissertation from, uh, to illustrate the Demand Purchase Program. The other part of my job involves reference consultations. And basically, one can occur when I'm contacted by a librarian, a professor, or a student, and I help them with a question or problem. The consultations can result in my identifying material of interest from CRL's collections for teaching professors, um, or items needed by researchers uh, to further their studies. In working with the user, I often advise them on how, if we do not have the material, how best CRL can help acquire the, ma the material. And this might be through any of those de uh, demand purchase programs, the shared purchase, or the purchase proposal programs. Um, also, uh, what happens often with the reference consultation is the identification of material for scanning for use in the classroom itself. Uh, this leads, is a nice segue into what Virginia Kerr will talk about, utilizing your membership. Thanks, Mary. In the membership section of CRL's website, you'll find a page called Making the Most of Your Membership. Kevin and Mary have already mentioned several of the programs and services noted there, which uh, can help you to leverage the value of your membership, including the demand purchase request, the shared purchase program, and loading records locally where it's appropriate for your institution. Also in that section of our website, we present suggestions and resources for marketing CRL locally to raise awareness among faculty and students on your campus. We note model practices among members who feature CRL on their websites, newsletters, and libguides. We even link to a video prepared by Carleton University in Ottawa, which includes wonderful comments by students and researchers enthusiastically describing how they benefited from unique resources available through CRL. We would love to hear from you about how you've referenced CRL locally. CRL has available printed uh, brochures highlighting facets of our collections, which are very useful for distributing to faculty and graduate students. We also offer a one-page flyer, which can be customized, and we provide some boilerplate language for you to integrate into your own website. Additionally, we'll be happy to provide individual publicity consultation. 
All of the collections and services featured here today are described in detail on CRL's website, which, as James noted, has recently been upgraded and enhanced, and we would love to get your feedback on our new website. Also, if you've not already signed up for our electronic newsletter, Connect, issued every two to three weeks, please do so. And follow CRL on Facebook and Twitter. I'm now turning this back over to James Simon. Thanks, Virginia, and Kevin and Mary. Uh, I, I hope that this gave you a, a good sense of CRL's collections and programs. You might wonder why we, we were hammering on some of the points, like the demand purchase and the shared purchase programs. These are just key ways uh, of using CRL to collect materials that are uh, difficult to acquire, that maybe uh, would not see enough use at your own institution, um, and uh, you know might might be things that uh, only uh, a few researchers would want to use. That's what CRL is really all about, though, is collecting the the specialized research materials uh, and the kinds of collections that uh, really will serve a, a broad primary source uh, uh, gain for for researchers uh, at U.S., uh, Canadian, and, and global member institutions. Um, I would say that you know these are these are programs that would be. You would be foolish if you didn't use them. I, I don't know how else to stress that these are great opportunities for you to, to think about ways to acquire materials through CRL. Um, the electronic licensing, which is a fairly new activity, is also a way to extend uh, access to collections that maybe your, your own local priorities uh, wouldn't, wouldn't make that collection available. Feel free to suggest things to us. In fact, that was, uh, in essence, kind of what I wanted to, to bring home at the end of this is You've heard from us, uh, and you've heard of these opportunities. I really do encourage you uh, to to get in touch with us if you have additional questions uh, about CRL. Uh, and we have a no number of questions that have come in, um, so so we will get to that. But I, I do want to encourage you to, if you have a new person in, in your ILL department, to get them in touch with Kevin for a, an ILL tune-up. Uh, if you have people who are interested in uh, digitization for uh, faculty, uh, to get them in touch with Mary to talk about the possibilities. In fact, that's the, the first question I wanted to address. Maybe we could talk about uh, some specifics about how we could uh, employ, employ CRL's activities for uh, faculty's research or teaching purposes. Um, we've had a few good examples, and I want Mary to uh, perhaps address this one because uh, she's, she's had some really good uh, use cases for this. Uh, this is a perfect question uh, to illustrate how a reference consultation uh, came about. In fact, the professor that contacted me initially was contacting for a fellow professor on another question, but I'd asked her, well, what sh was she doing? And then she informed me that she teaches this undergraduate uh, level course that introduced historical methods to freshmen and sophomore students. And she used the, the three-day war, or the six-day war in, in Israel as an example of how historians research a topic. Uh, she shared with me what her what she was currently using, and I was able to show her that CRL had English language foreign newspapers from countries uh, from Egypt and either Syria or Jordan, um, where before she was just using the Jerusalem Post and the New York Times as newspapers, but with that coverage. Um, it expanded the perspectives. Why initially she had borrowed just the microfilm for the class that she was teaching at the time, during the Christmas break we were able to scan the three-month period um, for both of those um, newspapers that I had made her aware of. Uh, one was from Egypt and one was from Syria, Syria or Jordan. So basically that's how it is. We may not be able to immediately get the product out, but especially since this was a class she was teaching almost every semester, we were able to do it in break time. 
Yeah, thanks. That's, that's just one example, and we've had several cases where we've been able to work with faculty uh, who are interested in, in a larger selection of the materials from CRL uh, and making them electronically available. Uh, Kevin mentioned, I think, that, that much of our in-house digitization is, is centered around on-demand digitization. So when uh, a faculty member comes to your ILL office and asks to borrow something from CRL, uh, we'll scan it if we can turn it around quickly uh, and make it available to you. If you have longer range interests, however, planning a course for next semester uh, and you want a slightly longer range of materials, by all means, do get in touch with us because we can uh, make a, a wider uh, selection of content available to you if we have uh, the knowledge of what you're interested in and, and the time frame you're expecting it. We can probably fit in some of those projects. So. Uh, think of us as a resource to make those available. Another part of this that, it, that is uh, uh, really useful is that we are able to make a selection of materials available exclusively to our members uh, that are in the gray area of copyright uh, or may not be necessarily just uh, open access content. Uh, that's because we use uh, secure authentication uh, and, and copyright uh, waivers to, to kind of help protect the fair use properties of this material. So we can put it up on our site and your, your uh, faculty and students can access that material straight through CRL system. Uh, we'd be interested to hear more about how you do make use of this type of material uh, and, and what possibilities there may be. So by all means, do, do be in touch with us about that. We have a couple of other uh, questions about dissertations and I think I'd like to ask Kevin to address these. Um, one asked uh, earlier whether we buy master's theses, and I think uh, Mary referred to it um, very specifically. No, we, we do doctoral theses, not master's. Uh, doctoral dissertations, not master's theses. Uh, so that is uh, one limitation of that program itself. And we just know that there are billions of master's theses. We couldn't possibly collect them all and collect them well. <laughs> um, uh, another question had to do, uh, however, with uh, the demand purchase and dissertations. Uh, and Kevin, the question was, if we find something on Ethos, can you purchase it? Uh, so I, I think it's just coming at it uh, not from uh, faculty interest, but is there something, if we identify an Ethos item, can we, can we request it through CRL? Yes, if it's a dissertation that is in Ethos, we are able, you can request it through us, and we will then make sure that you get access to it. Once again, if there is a cost for the initial scanning, we will pay for that, and then we will let you know when the scans are ready. And once the scans are available, they're always for free. Some of the dissertations have not been scanned, but the scanning is free. Those you can actually go ahead and um, have those processed on your own. But yes, we will do Ethos dissertations for you. I think we should count the number of times we say the word free uh, on this because it is uh, the number of programs that we have for you uh, without any uh, additional charges to your institution are immense. The access to the Linda Hall collections, the access to the eth ethos dissertations, all of this is, is part of your membership uh, and you should make unlimited use of it if you can. Uh, we had a question that related to the discovery uh, systems that I wanted to, to make sure because there was some interest in, in the registrations about how to uh, effectively uh, search and discover CRL's resources. Uh, I did mention uh, that uh, the uh, CRL's records are loaded into the major discovery systems and I think I left one out because uh, somebody asked about it. Are, are we in EBSCO's discovery service? Yes, yes we are. Uh, so in all of the major ones, we're there. Uh, and so we do encourage you to get in touch with us if you're not sure how to make that content uh, accessible. Um, and in general, uh, the familiar, familiarity with CRL's collections is a great way to, to use us. Um, make sure your reference folks know to go look in our collections if, if people are looking for materials. Uh, and, and Kevin, I know, uh, you know, in terms of borrowing materials, we do emphasize that people should put us first in their lending stream. So e even if you don't know that CRL has it, uh, if you've set us up correctly within your ILL processes, uh, CRL will be the library of first resort for you to get material uh, rather than uh, thinking of us uh, as, you know, a remote, remote facility. 
we had a quick question about uh, requirements for the, the foreign journals. And I mentioned the, the foreign journals in our collection represents a, a large portion of our materials. Um, primarily, we uh, identify foreign serials uh, through uh, two ways. One, uh, we have standing programs <coughs> with uh, certain uh, cooperative programs like the Library of Congress where uh, we have a collecting profile for identifying and adding new materials to specifically complement members' collections. We also have uh, maintained long-term subscriptions to other foreign science journals, foreign uh, social science materials. Um, we don't really have a, a direct policy of uh, nominations or voting on serials, but by all means, just get in touch with us if you find that there's something that uh, should be made accessible in libraries and maybe isn't widely, more widely available. Um, a lot of our serials decisions are made through our collections committee. Uh, I think we have one question before we wrap up, uh, and there was uh, a question about electronic resources that just popped in here. Um, some interest in African American newspapers that are available commercially. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, I believe, relating to um, a commercial database that uh, they would be interested in potentially in licensing. Um, or short of licensing, um, are there ways that we can get access to this material? So let me just address that quickly. Uh, first, CRL does engage, uh, as Mary discussed, in electronic resource licensing um, so that we, we do bring down the pricing uh, for member institutions. However, I think the question was if we can't participate in that, can we still borrow materials through CRL? Um, and by all means, uh, we do work with uh, uh, libraries to provide materials regardless of uh, whether, where they're, uh, whether they're available electronically or in print. Uh, we're having a live chat. This is so much fun. I'm reading you as you go. Uh, so not specifically about licensing, but can we request materials even if it's available commercially elsewhere like in electronic resources? Um, and with that is uh, remembering the demand purchase for newspapers we had to own the newspaper for it to qualify for that program, and at least one day's worth. And so we would then, if we have even a single day's holding of a title that you're aiming for, we would be able to try to acquire it. Um, now, it would be on microfilm, though. Thank you, Mary, and thanks to all for your questions. We're about to wrap up here. I'd like to remind you of the presenters today and their contact information, which you can also find on our website. I'd also like to remind you of upcoming CRL-sponsored events. The International and Area Studies Workshop for Librarians, meant to introduce librarians who may not have worked intensively with this material before, that's a special uh, event held in San Francisco just prior to the ALA conference. Registration is open to all and it's a, it's a really, uh, it's, it's a good representation of CRL's intense involvement in global area studies materials, um, especially through the various communities of interest that we support, which I think James didn't even have time to describe as thoroughly as, as, um, as we would uh, like to make you aware of these uh, uh, interest groups. You can look under the collaboration section of our website to see more about um, groups of interest in African, Latin American, Eastern European materials. But this workshop will also provide a good introduction to you. And then our next webinar is coming up in July. We've just set the date for that. Look for more information, but we have just posted that on our website, another in our series on text and data mining uh, to give more background to librarians. Your feedback is essential to our program planning. Please do take a moment to fill out the brief survey which appears when you log out today. This webinar is being recorded and will soon be available on CRL's YouTube channel along with other presentations such as our recent collections forum. Don't forget to sign up for CRL Connect and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. And thank you so much for participating today. Have a good afternoon.